Welcome to Morningstar. I'm Holly Black. With me is Neil Herman. He's manager of the Henderson Smaller Companies Trust. Hello. Hi, Holly. So smaller companies, quite a tricky area at the moment. How have they held up so far this year? Now, clearly a very tricky year and difficult year for equity markets in general and particularly for smaller companies for obvious reasons. Um, smaller companies have lagged large companies year to date. Uh, the Numis Benchmark Index, which is a good proxy, is down about 24%. The uh, Small Cap Index about 22%, whereas the, the FTSE 100 is down about 18 So not surprising, typically in periods of economic dislocation uh, and difficult conditions, there's a flight to the liquidity and safety of the perceived of the FTSE 100. So small companies have lagged a bit this year. So are there areas of winners and losers within that, though? It can't all be terrible. No, not at all, no. I mean, COVID-19 clearly been a massive impact on the global economy, an unprecedented um, demand shock, which I've never seen before, clearly. Um, someone almost pressed the old control delete button on the global economy and started again. So essentially, we've seen massive structural change um, condensed into a very short period of time. What would normally take years to happen has occurred in the space of a few months. Uh, therefore, been some very clear winners, as well as obviously clear losers from this crisis. In the winners camp, you'd put those companies that have seen a shift online, a kind of increase on shift online. So companies like AO World, electronic retailer, technology providers, you know, facilitating the work from home environment. So the simple such as Computer Center and um, Softcat, stay at home winners like computer games, software companies, um, and you know, home delivery like Pizza of uh, Domino's Pizza, as well as more defensive names where demand has remained resilient. So I think like companies like. Decra Pharmaceuticals, Animal Pharmaceuticals or defence companies. So one thing that's been a bit of a headwind for smaller companies over the last few years is Brexit. It feels like no one's talking about this this year because of the COVID-19 crisis. Is Brexit something that's still on your mind? Uh, yes, it is actually. I mean, and the speed and severity of COVID crisis really has pushed Brexit off the agenda to some extent. It's still there though, um, you know, and obviously at some point, we're trying to negotiate a trade deal with um, with the EU. We got to the end of the year before we exit the hard Brexit. Talks seem to be going not that well at this point in time, and clearly trying to negotiate a complex trade deal over Zoom is a bit difficult. Um, but there's still time, to be honest, actually, in terms to, to get things sorted out. But you know, it's definitely something which is not front and centre for the equity market, but will increasingly come into focus as we go through the next few months. But you know, even with some of that, it's not the only you know, concern and risk out there. We talk about COVID. Brexit, but also you've got kind of worsening Sino-American relationships, potential new trade war and a US election in November. So lots of things for the equity market to worry about at the moment. So Neil, with all of those worries, why should I consider investing in smaller companies? Look, I think the kind of the, uh, this year has been a tough year for small caps, um, for not unsurprising reasons, as we've mentioned earlier. However, the long-term track record of small companies is, is fantastic. Um, if you put a thousand pounds into the Numis Index back in 1955, it'd now be worth 757,000 pounds. A similar investment in the FTU share would now be worth 118,000 pounds. So, over that very long term, 65-year period, small caps have done six times better than large caps, which is an average outperformance of 3.2% per year every year for the last 65 years. Um, the reasons for that performance, I don't think, have really changed. I mean, essentially, you know, you think about smaller companies, it's entrepreneurial management teams, it's um, more operational leverage, um, the law of large and small numbers growing from a smaller base, um, you know, the source of new technology and services, all those things remain valid. So ultimately, I think from a taking a medium to longer term perspective, smaller companies can provide extra returns for, for investors. The short term, more opaque, the long term, still very confident. Neil, thank you so much for your time. For Morningstar, I'm Holly Black.